Hello, Summoners, and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng, and today we'll be talking about our predictions for the 50 most broken champions on patch 12.15. One of the most important things in a constantly evolving game like League of Legends is to be able to adapt with the meta, and that's why we're here for you. If you want to know what's going to be OP before the patch even hits, you'll be ready to hit the ground running without even having to test if one buff or nerf really made that much of a difference. And if you don't know how to play any of these OP picks, or you're just a little bit rusty, this will give you a few days to brush up on them and some normals are on a smurf. Before we get started, I want to say that this list is not in any particular order. It's just a list of champions that we predict will be some of the strongest, most influential picks on this patch. We'll start things off with Kennen. For the past several months, Kennen has been struggling pretty badly as a top laner, while in the mid lane, he's had a ton of success. His pick rate isn't that high, but when he's locked in, he tends to carry very hard. So as is often the case of champion balance, in an effort to make him better in his main role, Riot is just going to make him more broken in a role where he's already OP. He lanes safely against ranged champions, bullies melee ones hard, and can hard carry teamfights at all stages of the game. All of those pros come with basically no cons. Trust me when I say that Kennen is definitely one of the very best champions to abuse this patch, and with his low play rate, you'll very rarely have to worry about him being contested, unless people finally catch on. Whether you're trying to learn to abuse the broken champions on this list, or how to deal with them when you end up on the wrong side of the matchup, if you really want to speed up that process, you should check out ProGuides.com. We have courses from all your favorite streamers and pros, like Core JJ, Aphromoo, and Nick Smithy to really help you understand how to play a role. And if you want a more personalized experience, we have coaches available 24-7, ready to help you guys become the best. Our coaches are top tier players that have spent years climbing the Silicu ladder to get where they are now, and they're ready to share everything that they've learned with you. Now, let's get back on topic, shall we? The next pick that we have is Ramis. For multiple patches in a row, Ramis was doing super well, with his win rate sitting around in the mid-50s. He's just fell off quite a bit in the last couple of weeks, but it's not like he's doing poorly. In most ranks, he's still in the low 50s, with him just barely being under the midway mark in Diamond Plus. But letting him not be broken isn't on Riot's agenda, so they're dishing out some huge buffs this patch. His ult is now going to be a lot stronger when it's up, and with it, also a lower cooldown. That means you'll be able to put out a lot more pressure on the enemy team. Despite his healing getting a pretty big nerf last patch, Aatrox's performance actually jumped way up, with him now being one of the best top laners in the game. And with this patch nerfing Divine Sunderer, making a lot of other bruisers weaker, he's actually going to get another indirect buff. When Riot first buffed tank items a few patches ago, they were really quick to nerf Mundo when he shot up in the charts. But one champ that they completely ignored was Zac. He was doing pretty much as well as Mundo in the top lane, while also being one of the top performing junglers, and even doing really well as a support. And now, multiple patches later, he's still a terror in all three roles. Next up we have Swain. Riot has actually tried to push on some nerfs for him since his midscope update turned him into a nigh unkillable Demon King. But the nerfs that they've gone with have really not done the trick. He does take a bit to really come online, but once you have 2 or 3 items and you're ranked 2 ultimate, it's not an exaggeration to say that he can pretty much solo carry every team fight from then on. Massive AoE damage and enough healing to be a true drain tank. What more can you ask for? Diana continues to be a really solid pick in both the jungle and mid lane. Like any assassin, Diana has a ton of snowball potential, since she can pretty much one-shot squishies when fed. But unlike most other assassins, you don't really need to be fed to be useful. That's thanks to her ultimate. Diana is an exception to the assassin class. Most of them have to wait for the right time to go in on their targets and fights, but Diana can pretty much actually engage the fights. Having the ability to be the first one in and completely one-shot backlaners with their combo doesn't seem exactly balanced, and that's precisely why she's on this list. It's safe to say that Riot went a little bit overboard with Heimer's buff back on 12.12, .12, but somehow, they still haven't really caught on on what they've done. In all four non-jungle roles, he's absolutely dominating. He may not be picked a ton, but when he is, there aren't very many reliable answers that your foes can respond with. While her nerf last patch did a bit to reel her in, Seraphine is still a massive elo inflator, enough so that she still belongs on this list when you're talking about her as a bot laner. She still neutralizes lane pretty hard, and outscales or at least evenly scales with any other hybrid carry that may end up getting picked. And remember, if you build her to do damage with items like Sorcerer Shoes and Ludens over just stacking haste, you can be super impactful in fights without just being a heal bot. I really wish more people would start abusing Taric. We called it before the durability patch went live. The longer more extended fights caused by these durability changes would make a champion with high utility a lot better, especially those with low cooldowns. And with Tarek's ability to constantly cycle between spells as long as you keep reducing cooldowns by smacking opponents with his passive, it's no wonder that he's performing so insanely well right now. The only single matchup in the game that is truly unplayable for Tarek is Janna, so if you're going to be abusing him, make sure you ban her out. Alternatively, you can abuse her too, since she's the next pick on her list. While Riot tried to nerf her back on 12.12, .12, and then again on 12.14 via both direct and indirect changes, she's still going to be strong as one of the best support picks in the game. One thing I like to say about Janna is that Champion does have a bit of a skill cap. 
Sure, anybody can pick her up and spam abilities and just look kind of useful, but you can definitely tell the super good Janet players apart from the average ones. Distinguishing between how easy it is to pick up a champion and then play them, and how good a champion actually is, is an important thing. And that's why we have terms like skill floor and skill ceiling, to answer things like how hard is X champion. And that brings us to today's question of the day. What's another champion that has a low skill floor but a surprisingly high skill ceiling? Let us know your answers and why in the comments down below. Now without further ado, let's get back into the video. After his recent buffs, Fiddle really shot up as being one of the very best picks in the game. It turns out a longer fear and just a bit more damage was enough to push him over the edge. I really expected to see some direct nerfs in him this patch, but instead, Riot is going after first strike instead. This has been his go-to perk for a while, and it'll still probably still be fine after the patch goes live, but if not, don't forget that Electrocute is a pretty good alternative. If you do end up giving Fiddle 6 a try, it's pretty simple. If the enemy team is just throwing free kills at you, obviously take the freebies, but don't try super hard to force dumb fights. Just farm up until 6 so you have your ultimate, and then completely play around that. A lot of people take the whole farm champ label to heart and really go overboard with it. It's super important that you use your ultimate every time it's up, otherwise you're just wasting your potential. If Fiddle's scaling 5v5 style doesn't really suit you, then maybe Volibear is more your speed. After 12.14 made the game a lot more rewarding for champions to have an early game control, it makes more sense to see him here. He's got some of the best clear speed and dueling power in those early levels, so with good pathing, you can very easily build up tempo and completely run the map. To take things even further, you can use his ultimates to really get the snowball rolling. Just make sure that you're targeting a lane where you're all but guaranteed to get kills with his ultimate, since it's a pretty long cooldown. Outside of the early game, his damage does fall off a bit, but by that point, you should have most of your team ahead enough that just filling the role of engaging frontliner should be enough to win. Another jungler that makes the list is Belveth. After her hotfix on 12.12, Belveth's performance actually took a bit of a fall, but it was actually a false alarm. She's back to doing just as well and maybe even better than before. She does take a bit to get going, but once you start picking up kills, it can be very difficult for the enemy champion to shut you down. She's one of the few champions in the game that truly has 1v9 potential but definitely not the only one. Just look at Master Yi. For whatever reason, they decided to give him an absolutely insane set of buffs in 12.13 that made him so broken that they immediately hotfix nerfed him. Even after those nerfs, he remained a top tier pick. And I hate to break this to you Yi haters out there, but there's no way that the nerf that he's getting this time around is gonna do very much. Four more seconds on his E's cooldown is pretty much never gonna come into play, especially when he's getting resets and fights. Finishing off our list, we have a Mumu. This sad mummy is another example of a multi-role superstar who just completely crushes almost all the other foes in his role, but goes largely ignored by both Riot and you guys, and it's kind of silly. The champ just absolutely is not fair. On top of his ridiculous chain CC combo, he actually does a lot of damage for a tank, and that's why he's just so, so overpowered in the jungle right now. Plenty of tanks are good, but the truly OP ones are the ones that can both engage fights and carry them. With the Moomoo, it's not a stretch to say that you can literally solo the entire enemy backline with just two or three items. And no, you don't need some cringe full AP build to do so. You literally do more damage with a tank build since you just never die and can slowly burn down opponents in extended fights. And that about wraps things up for our predictions for the 15 most broken champions on patch 12.15. Thank you guys so much for watching, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure you subscribe so you never miss out on our content like this. And remember, let us know a champion that has a low skill floor but high skill ceiling in the comments down below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below, where you can discuss the league further, or just hang out and be part of the community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.